I was young. I was young. I was courageous and I was bright. I will not accept anything without testing it or without somebody says you do it. No. It, is it legally, ethically correct? Let it be, you know, I, I cut my hair. I bobbed my hair in Hubli and it became a landmark. And oh, you want Dr. Kulkarni's house? The girl who has cut their, her hair, third house from here. So when I cut my hair, it became a landmark to search my house. Or I decided to go to engineering in 1968, almost, um, you know, 50 years back, uh, 52 years back. And everybody advised my father, your daughter is really doing wrong things, stop her. Because it was unimaginable, a girl doing engineering in a man's domain. Or when I joined, uh, so when I wanted to go abroad, uh, I applied because uh, uh, I wanted to do my PhD in computer science. And one day, and I was, the one, uh, I was in the Tata Institute of Indian of Science, and I was coming from the lecture class. I was supposed to leave in September for uh, Boston, for MIT. And on the way, uh, you know, I came, uh, I was coming. I had four or five scholarships. I thought one of them I will choose. I saw an advertisement on the notice pay board. Uh, Telco requires young, bright engineers and uh, you know, uh, the salary will be so much. The training will be for a year or two. And at the end, lady students need not apply. That made me very mad. I said, why? Why men think a lady cannot do many you know, things like them? I got upset and I was young. You know, when you are young, you don't think much. I took a postcard from my, my drawer and I wrote, um, dear, I mean, dear Mr. Tata, because I knew J.R.D. Tata was the head of the Tatas. He used to come to uh, the Institute of Science for the uh, Founders' Day. From a distance, I had seen him. He was very, like a Greek figure, very handsome. But I was a very, I come from a middle-class family, from a place like Hubli. Uh, I will not go and talk to him. You know, I, it was, I, I can't even think doing that one. So I said, okay, let me write, Mr. J.R.D. Tata. And uh, who, which company has written like this? Telco, Telco, Bombay, and I posted that letter. I wrote to Mr. Tata, Tatas are always ahead of time. Let it be iron and steel, let it be salt or cloth or electricity. They've always done their uh, projects, their companies to help our country. I'm surprised such a benevolent Tatas have made a rule a lady student need not apply. Is it not, how can it be? What a great mistake they are doing. When a society consists of 50% men and 50% women, and you do not want to give an opportunity for a woman who is a, belongs who belongs to 50% or women who belong to 50%, in that case, you are paralyzing the working force of women. And such country will not progress. And for that, people like you or your company are responsible. It's quite strong words, you know. I, I sent it to him and I forgot about it. Actually, I was quite foolish because the address was wrong. The real address was Ms. the one who is in charge of Telco or the chairman was not Jadi Tata, it was Sumant Malgaonkar. The address is Mr. S or Mr. Sumant Malgaonkar, Chairman Telco, 24 Homi Modi Street, Nanavati Mahalaya, Fort Bengal, Bombay 1. This is the address. I wrote Jadi Tata, Telco, Bombay. Not Nothing. But he was J.R.D. Tata, so the letter reached him. He read that postcard and he called the people who went to Bengal for the Indian of Science for interview. Seven of them went in. They said, yes, we have gone. Why did you write like that? Yes, sir, because it is the work was in Bihar, the training was in Bihar, and it was in shift, and no girl has joined Tata's in the form of, form of an executive uh, or an engineer. They were always clerks. Uh, Stinos, nobody has come, so we can't, we can't take anybody like. He said, "Give her a chance to prove technically she is equal to men, or she is good in her presentation." And then they sent me a telegram. In those days, I used to stay in a ladies' hostel, Indian Institute of Science, and there was no telephone to the girls' hostel because girls will talk to boys. There was no in those days. There was no app. There was no cell phone. There was no internet. Now it was only. You know, I'm talking in 1974, 20, 46 years back. So uh, there was no telephone and I got a telegram. 
saying that kindly attend the final interview uh, by first class train uh, journey we will pay for your expenses because in those days there was no flight between train to bangalore to pune i never traveled by first class so i got traveling by first class by train i said okay let me use that advantage there are three four girls in our hostel you know we are doing their phd they said sudha you must go i said why pune sarees are very good and quite cheap so 30 rupees is to cost they they gave me some money then i went there and i went to the interview there i saw there were seven people sitting and they were they were quite upset looking at me because they felt it um, I, i you know i wrote to jrd he said oh this is the one who has written to the big boss then they then you know they interviewed me and i did very well in the interview then one of them dr s satyamurthy is still alive he told you know why we wrote like this because this is a mass domain there is a jojobara plant in jamshedpur where other than indira gandhi no woman has stepped in it is like a 2000 machines and it is in a shift and it is always all workers are around if a young girl of your age comes how to handle them how you handle them so oh, people will take it and so it is you are intelligent but you can be in r&d you can be in hr but you cannot be in shop floor or the on the machine with machinery i am a granddaughter of a school teacher you know my grandfather was a history teacher so he taught me history in a very young age i used the his quotation there and i told who in that song in the year 620 ad wanted to travel to india and from shian to kanauj by foot everyone said don't go you will die you can't cross gobi desert this that everybody discouraged but he said for a 10000 li li is the measurement of uh, spare you know of the land actually like a mile a 10000 mile li journey there is always one step to start if you tata start giving such reasons then there is no and no woman will join it forever it will be a man's domain and even though women are good they cannot join then they said no another point you are a young marriageable uh, you are a girl in a marriageable age and if we give you training for two years and after marriage you will go away our training will be a waste so why why should we take a woman i said yeah, also uh, be a member sitting over here when you are married your wife has come from her place to your place and why there should be an exception for me but if you take boys if you take young men if somebody pay them 500 rupees more salary they will leave and go leaving a company is set of many difficulties or many options but just because she is a female you can't do then they said okay uh, you will offer your job i said i'll think and let you know while coming back i got down at hubli and i told my father all my adventures my father was my best friend you know in my time it was very unheard people used to get scared of father in my case no we were very good friends i told him i used to call him kaka and said kaka you know i did like that my father said your upper portion of the head brain is empty he was extremely upset with me i said why he said for such person jade tata you have to write a postcard band the lifafa mein ek khat dal sakte the you don't even understand how to address elderly people then he said what are you doing Said, I'm not taking a job. I want to go abroad and do my PhD. He said, "Never do that one. That shows you are selfish." When things were going on well, you asked the question why women are not equal to men. And when they are offering you a job and you don't take up, it shows that they will quote you saying that men, women only talk; they don't do. And it also shows a selfish nature that I can talk, and when which is advantageous to me, I will do. if you have open the pandora box you are responsible to close it also but in those days we never used to talk like this you know this is my life my time i want my space none of them used to talk so i told okay i will think it over and i took two days i thought over it then i tore the letter of admission i joined house of tata i learned a lot there particularly philanthropy how to you should be with the people and my entire credit should the credit of starting philanthropy should go to house of tata and when i quit telco i met jrd on the staircase and he asked me kulkarni he used to call me kulkarni only you know i was married a mrs murthy for him it was always kulkarni he said kulkarni why are you leaving uh, telco i said sir my husband is starting a company called infosys an adventure it's no my husband has an adventure called infosys 
and I want to help him, so I want to step uh, leave. He said, Kulkarni, suppose you make a lot of money, what you will do? I said, sir, I don't think so we'll ever make money because I'm not sure Murthy will make money. I was not sure at all. Okay. He said, never start a company with a dividend, start with a confidence. When you get a lot of money, please remember, the money should go back to the society. You are only the trustee of that money. The money doesn't belong to you. Society gives you so much affection, so much love, so much care, so much name, and you should give it to that guy. I said, yes, sir, you know, because I was not sure. And at the last time I saw him, I, when we became fairly successful, I went back to House of Tatas, House of Tatas, and and uh, 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 you know, Mr. Ratan Tata was in the chairman sir's seat. Murthy said, Ratan Sudha wanted to meet you. I said, he can call you Mr. Tata or Ratan, I can't call you. You are always the chairman, sir, to me because you occupied JRD's chair, who was no more by that. He said, Sudhaji, tell me, what do you want from House of Tata? I said, if you want to give me, I want two pictures. One is Jamshedji in a black and white background. Other one is JRD in a blue suit. And that they adore, these two pictures adore in my office. And every day when I go to office in the morning, I say, thank you very much, sir. You have changed my life. They changed me forever. If I would have been in any company or if I had done my PhD, I would have retired by this time. Or if I would have been a director of any company, I would have been retired. One more director would have come. But I could touch the hearts of millions. I could help my own fellow countrymen. Actually, God gave me a great opportunity to be in philanthropy. And that is the reason I always feel many, many windows were closed to me, but many doors were opened to me. And I'm very grateful to House of Tata. Are you happy to listening to the House of Tata story? Yeah, really, really great. inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> Many people write to me, you wrote a postcard, you got a job, I will write you a postcard, you get me a job and all. I said, getting a postcard is not that. There's nothing great in me. It was a JRD Tata who read that postcard and called you. He was great, not me. Yes. <laughs>